Mkwekwe, the self-styled steel town of Central Africa, recently held an at-home day for commercial representatives of British, South African and American governments to show off its achievements and its potential. The visitors toured the town and also the neat African township of Mbizo. But Kwekwe's raison d'etre is industry, mining and steel. The visitors were shown over the Risco works at Redcliffe, second in size in Africa only to the giant South African Iskor. Steel rod comes off the assembly line in apparently endless supply. And here's a little trick you might like to try sometime. That rod is almost white hot. The giant Lancashire Steel Company has successfully established a rod mill and wire works in Kwekwe. These mills can turn out enough wire products to satisfy the whole country's needs and still have some over for export. Kwekwe is justly proud of its achievements and optimistic about its future. Mr Cyril Hattie forecasts that Kwekwe would become the third largest town in southern Rhodesia in less than 20 years. To most of us, travelling by train simply means buying a ticket, getting on and getting off at the other end. We never think of this vast nerve centre which ensures that we reach our destination safely. Centralised train control was introduced in 1955 and is due to be completed early in 1963. From the minute the train leaves the station, it's under the watchful electronic eye of the system. Details of the journey, or the code, are set on the system and stored until required. Signals are automatically set at level crossings. But a phone message to the controller, reporting for instance an engine breakdown, can have the code changed if required. The central control system obviates the necessity of having a station foreman at sidings. His work is done automatically from a distance, resulting in a great saving of manpower and releasing trained men for more productive duties. The points are set by remote control when the panel shows that the train is approaching and this new type signal replaces the old arm signal. The panel shows the position of the train at any given moment and the train builds up its own safety system of signals both in front and behind it, thus eliminating human error and providing maximum safety. The train approaches a signal, a message is relayed to control the points are set and the signals automatically go red behind it. This new system is costing Rhodesia Railways five million pounds and is the largest extended control system in the world covering 1,250 miles from Amtali to Endola. Should the instructions fed into the machine not conform with the local conditions, the system will reject it within 10 seconds. Even a machine is not allowed to make a mistake. Big Brother is watching you the whole time on Rhodesia Railways, but in this case, his only concern is to see that you reach your destination safely. How often do you see dogs roaming loose around the streets like this? Their masters no doubt feel they're giving their pets their freedom, but in fact they're exposing them to great danger like these victims of car accidents on the veterinary surgeon's table. Mr. Peter Intini believes that all dogs, irrespective of breed or breeding, can be trained to obey commands and thereby keep themselves safe from injury. Every Sunday morning at the Salisbury Showgrounds, a motley collection of pets, from pooches to aristocrats, can be seen going through their paces. From humble beginnings of merely sitting, the dogs graduate to the advanced classes. These dogs will obey the command to stay put until their masters rejoin them. Here's an even more difficult test of obedience and patience. The dogs are told to stay, and their masters will hide away from them. Ten minutes later, the masters return, and not one dog has moved. What an example we of the human race could take from this. 
from mere obedience to performing. Sit, over, lie down, and over. And what use is all this, you might ask? Well, you're out shopping, you're laden with parcels, and you don't want to clutter up the shop. Watch it, boy, and you can be sure no one will steal your parcel. Or if you don't feel like going downstairs for the paper on a Sunday morning. A dog cannot be trained by ill-treating it. Patience and reward, either a friendly pat or a tasty titbit, is the formula. And if you live in a busy town, here's how training will keep your pet from harm. This dog will not move until the command to cross comes from his master. Wait, come boy. Yes, any dog can be trained in only a few months and he'll be fitter, happier and safer. It's only a few years since helicopters were brought to the Federation in any numbers, but since then, the tasks carried out by this versatile aircraft are legion. Now the copter is being used for spraying Salvinia auriculata, the deadly Kariba weed. The pipe carrying the spraying nozzles is fixed across the beam of the helicopter, and with tanks of weed killer attached below the rotor, the machine prepares to do battle. After two years of intensive research, the federal government has solved the problem of controlling the weed by spraying chemicals from a boat. Now helicopters are being used to see if these huge mats of weed can be broken up by spraying from the air in regions which are inaccessible to boats. 15 gallons of weed killer per acre are now being used as compared to 200 gallons two years ago, and the experts hope shortly to reduce the amount to two gallons an acre. Development of a different nature is going on on the lake shore. Here, soil is being brought from a new harbour to level off the ground prior to building. This is the site of not a motel, but a boat tell, where, of course, you simply sail into the hotel in your boat. The owners of the boat tell are Mr. and Mrs. Stokes, and already they've had to expand by building more chalets. The owners stand by to choose the positions of the doors and windows, a simple matter with prefabricated sections of the building. Amtali has taken advantage of Kariba's Operation Noah to establish a game park with some very novel ideas. 30 acres of land adjoining the main park have been set aside and 50 animals were brought here from Kariba in one expedition. One of these Impala does has been adopted by the girls of the Telephone Exchange and has naturally been named Telephone Bell. And here's a superb herd of regal-looking sable antelope. These are kudu does who have no horns and they seem to outnumber the male kudu. Say, Hester, we're going on the pictures. Keep still. Star performer at the Amtali game park is Hollywood, the Hornbill. Not only is he a frightfully handsome chap, but he has a suave way with the girls, too. Hollywood strongly supports the local cigarette industry, but he's not yet started singing any of the jingles. No doubt this will soon be rectified. Fifty animals take a lot of feeding, but the people of Amtali see to it that there's a plentiful supply of cabbage leaves available. Man created Kariba and drove the creatures from their homes. Now man makes restitution by caring for them. Dinner is served. Ah, cabbage, goody.